Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're going to be nicer to call center staff after watching this video. Finally had a good call for the first time in forever. I work in the call center for a business supplier. After COVID hit, we ran completely out of stock on hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, basically any and all antiviral equipment. After receiving more in stock, we enacted a policy that all of this would be reserved for businesses marked in our system as first responders and select healthcare clients. For example, specialty nursing, dialysis clinics, etc. A lot of people have been understanding of this, but there's also been a lot of abuse hurled my way because of this policy. Today though, I had a call which just made me smile and made me feel good. Thank you for choosing company, how can I help? Um, I placed an order but a couple of items didn't arrive. If they're out of stock, I understand, but I'd like to see if they're available. Yeah, for sure. Just let me check that up. You're missing uh, hand sanitizer, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The reason for that is because we're limiting which types of businesses can order these supplies, but let me see here if you qualify. I check and see that they're in home nursing, which does qualify. Oh, yep, you definitely qualify. Sorry about that. The system is really rigid, so the smallest thing can have the items cancelled. I'm just going to make sure that the account is set up properly and I have you flagged as healthcare. How many bottles are you going to need? Oh my gosh, thank you. It's been impossible to get this and my usual supplier is now charging $10 a bottle for hand sanitizer. Quick note that we're selling the same size bottles for $3 each. I know there's a limit of 10, but ideally I'd like a bottle for each of my nurses, so about 40. Well, it's a limit of 10 per order technically, but it's actually a limit of 50 per customer. I can override it and sell you that amount. He then became very appreciative. This past month has been excruciating and that call helped rejuvenate my view on the situation. Sir, I doubt you go on Reddit or you're ever going to see this, but you ended my week perfectly. I've been on the brink of quitting my job for a long time and I think this is going to help me be able to stick it out for just a little bit longer to see at least this pandemic end. Thank you. This is also a huge testament to being nice instead of screaming down the phone at someone will usually get you further. <laughs> is it creepy for me to look up my customer service rep on social media? Hey all, full disclosure, I've worked at a call center for over two years so I know exactly how this will sound but please hear me out. I'm a customer calling into a large business and got connected with a young guy sounding my age. This is not normal for me. I never talk to phone representatives and take their kindness for anything more than professionalism. However, during a 40 minute consultation call, I think I fell in love with the guy on the other end. I'm female, early 20s for clarification. We had a few things in common and I really loved the guy's energy and just the way he spoke. I don't even know how to describe it. I could feel a connection. More than any business call I've ever had to make. And no, I'm not lonely or socially deprived of human connection. Something really stuck out to me about him, and he mentioned during the call that he's in a band in a particular town, so it took two seconds and I found his music Instagram. Oops. I'm low-key fantasizing about DMing him, and saying something along the lines of, Hi, I don't normally do this, but I was curious to hear some of your music and came across your page. Awesome stuff, and thanks again for all your help. How weird am I for even wanting to do this? Someone talk me out of it, or someone talk me into this, please. Okay. Please, 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 for the love of any deity that you may follow, please never do this. I shouldn't have to explain any further how creepy this could be. If that person wanted you to somehow contact him, then he would have mentioned that. And coming from experience, I have literally had people asking me for my surname so that they can connect with me on Facebook. And in reality, it just made me want to be less friendly on the next call. So please don't do this. <laughs> He's going to get me so fired. TLDR, he didn't. Hey, has anyone ever decided on a name for the male version of a Karen? If not, I'm going to call mine Carlin. And he was a fun guy to deal with at 7am with very little coffee in my system. The backstory. I do tech support for a national provider that offers TV service, among other things. At the moment, Due to COVID-19, we are only sending technicians into customer homes if all services or an essential service are down. In other words, if you only have one TV and it's not working, we'll send a tech. Four TVs and one isn't working? No tech for you until post-COVID. We do credit you for the outage, however. 
So, I answer the phone to someone who initially refuses to verify his identity. Always a warning flag that we're entering Karen or Carlin territory. This Carlin, after I dragged his ID out of him with a hook, promptly tells me that he is not at home, so he can't do any troubleshooting, and even if he was home, he wouldn't troubleshoot because that's your job, not mine. Yeah, that's strike two for me, dog. After much grumbling, he tells me the issue. His TV in his pool house is not working. This is one of five televisions, by the way. But it's not working, and it's my job to try and fix it. So I ask him when he'll be home, so that I can try and troubleshoot it with him. Did you not hear me? I'm not doing that. That's not my job. Send me a tech. That's his job. Gosh, I am so sorry, but I'm not sending you a technician. If the rest of your TVs are working, the best I can do is schedule one for after the COVID restrictions are lifted. No. What you're going to do is get me a technician. Or today is the day that you'll lose your job. Note that yes, all the caps does equal yelling. Again, I'm so sorry, but you're not getting a technician. It's not an option. Then I'm going to quit all your services. Do you hear that? I'm going to quit and you are going to get fired. Now get me your manager. What this Carlin does not get is that my manager makes me seem like a picnic. He has about lost his damn mind with stress over the last week or so, and he's had enough of everyone's crap. So I fill my manager in. He listens to the call, and then comes onto the line. My manager introduces himself to the Carlin. It's about damn time. Get me my heckin' tech. So, I understand you want to cancel your services because you can't get a technician, so I've gone ahead and cancelled your account for you. We'll issue you credit for the balance, and you'll need to drop off your equipment at this address. Well now hold on a minute here. Great, it's done, I've cancelled it for you, and you have a great day. Click. It was less than two hours before the Carlin called into the office, asked for his services to be reconnected, and politely agreed to troubleshooting his TV issue over the phone. He just needed to reboot it. Quel shock. Quel surprise. Young lady, your supervisor isn't going to be happy with this call. This happened back 20 years ago, when I was on the collections team of a satellite TV provider. It was a small team, and we all sat together, so if one client was abusive, we knew about it. Enter the male version of Karen, who I'm calling Carlin, as I'm totally stealing that from another post in this subreddit. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Carlin was calling over and over in one night, trying to bully his way into getting his service turned back on. We had cut off his services for non-payment, after the usual phone calls and bills. You had to be 90 days past due to be cut off. He had already screamed at at least two of my teammates, he had insulted my supervisor, and she was pissed. Having failed to bully my team into submission, Carlin tried a different method when he was transferred to me. I don't want to give you my name or phone number or account number. Can I tell you my situation and then you can tell me what you can do for me? Sure. We had caller ID. I used his phone number to look up his account. I saw that he was the Carlin that called my supervisor a pig. I read all of the notes while listening to his tale of woe. He launched into a story on how he was down on his luck and so sorry that he fell behind in his bills and he literally had no money in his bank account at all. But he would like to set up a payment plan and be reconnected. He was a loyal customer and would stay a customer forever if we could do that for him. Would I reconnect him? We were allowed to reconnect customers using our judgement. I would have never agreed to reconnect an account without reviewing it first, and thanks to caller ID, I had the information I needed. I expressed my sympathy for the rough times that he was experiencing, but per company policy, I couldn't reconnect him without receiving payment. He said, in a tone that implied he actually gave a crap, Oh, young lady, your supervisor isn't going to be happy to hear that you've said that. I knew that he had called my supervisor a pig, but he didn't know that I knew that. I expressed regret that I could not reconnect him. Then he stopped playing Mr. Nice Guy. He screamed the usual words about how awful we were. He threatened to call the newspaper the next day and take out a giant ad, telling everyone what a disgusting company we were, if we didn't reconnect him right now. And what did I think about that? I advised that he had just told me that he had no money, so I was confused on how he was going to pay for that ad. Not my finest response, but it felt good. Carlin said, Oh, they'll take a promise to pay, unlike your crappy company. By this time, one of my teammates had figured out that I was talking to Carlin. She had already been screamed at by him earlier. She messaged her supervisor. As I ended the call because of profanity, my supervisor came over. I assured her that I didn't reconnect Carlin, and also shared the bit about him not giving me his account number, 
but me using caller ID to figure out who he was. I never did tell him about the caller ID. <laughs> okay, so that's all for r slash Tales from Call Centers. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description. And any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!